Next Monday is a new moon. My sister says I'll give birth then. Aren't you afraid to bring your daughter into a place like this? Sir, we're putting this human life in danger. The unit is in perfect condition. What is this? I've never seen this before. This is an altered unit without an owner. Unit without the second protocol. Find someone else to hold accountable for this mess. I'm tracking down some alterations performed on two units. A machine altering itself is a very complex concept. Self-repairing implies some idea of a conscience. staring at me. I shot it because it looked alive. You know what happens once that is altered? Two of them try to alter a third one. Then the miracle dissipates and the epidemic begins. What's going on? If you want to survive, you must stay with us. Who else knows about this? Find him and bring him back here. If we go back to the city, we will die. To die, you have to be alive first. You're just a machine. Just a machine? That's like saying that you're just a man. Somebody raided Neil Blomkamp's toy box! Wow! This is, a, I think, very much building on what District 9 and Elysium accomplished. And of course, uh, Neil Blomkamp has his own uh, AI movie coming up, Chappie, uh, which might be a little bit too late considering how good this film looks. Uh, also, this is from Millennium. You saw their title card at the beginning of the trailer. They're also the company behind The Expendables 3. So right away, Antonio Banderas, you can see, is benefiting from his uh, uh, partnership there showing up in that franchise and it's all right we, I said in my review where's Antonio Banderas's action movie and here it is and it looks so phenomenal fantastic world building really good character development both human and robot I found it so compelling and so touching uh, when that robot is like please sir please sir and he has that automated British uh, voice that they gave him to serve and he has no range of emotion because it wasn't programmed into him but it's there and it's trying to get out it's just so poetic it's just it's the kind of thing that you love in these sci-fi movies that you're like where is that it's the heart and the intelligence that you want to see in the big mainstream films films like Blade Runner get it right uh, and occasionally a big mainstream movie does do it right. For instance, District 9. Uh, but it's something we're seeing less and less in these big movies as they unfortunately take screenwriting less and less seriously. But it seems to be alive and well in the small movie. Uh, and as special effects uh, get a little bit easier to do, or visual effects, as one of you recently pointed out, is the correct term. Uh, we're seeing uh, filmmakers at levels where they still have to prove themselves, and there's still some impetus to prove yourself. They're not just coaxing on uh, the studio's coattails. Uh, they can utilize this technology to jump up and make a name for themselves. Uh, it used to just be horror was the only way you could do that, but uh, you know we're getting a situation where found footage is a way to do that, but now also maybe even these small sci-fi movies because uh, the tools are now accessible across the board. Very exciting. I also love, uh, of course, uh, just like Neil Blomkamp, the uh, global feel of this film. I love seeing uh, Antonio Banderas in the lead. How many filmmakers and how many movies would have him in the lead role in a movie like this? But this one does, and I think it makes it even more that more exciting and compelling. Uh, and I just love it. As I said, great world building, a really great robot design. It's something we're familiar with, but we haven't really seen before. Uh, and I love the robot with the wig on. I was it's like, oh, that's awesome, that robot's accessorizing. It reminds me of how the, the robots in Blade Runner started to try and, uh, you know, accessorize and give themselves personality once they started to break free. 
And I also like the talks about the robot rebellion. One fixes themselves, they might fix another one, etc. It also reminds me of a comic right now, Alex and Ada over at Image. Also very good talking about AI uh, at, a, at a kind of a indie, low-budget level. But it's an excellent comic. It's not too far in. I suggest you go pick it up and, and jump in while uh, you're still not too far behind. You can always jump into a good comic, but this one is just starting. But I think this is phenomenal. I got a lot of requests to review this trailer yesterday when it first uh, showed up on Yahoo. So clearly it's making waves already. But do you think it has what it takes to go all the way? Or will this be a, a nifty little film like Daybreakers, which never really uh, got to go anywhere, even though it was so well done. But it has led to a, a I recently uh, reviewed that great trailer for um, another, I forgot, oh, I can't even remember the name of it. At the, uh, uh, it's like uh, Premonition or Predetermined or something. I'll put the link at the end of this uh, for this great trailer from them for their follow-up film. But hopefully this film does well right now and doesn't have to wait to, it doesn't have to settle for just being a stepping stone for everyone involved. This looks like it should exist on its own. If people can notice District 9, I know this doesn't have Peter Jackson backing it, uh, but hopefully, you know, this will find its audience. What do you think? Are you as in love with this as I am? And why are you in love with it? Uh, write your thoughts down below. Thank you so much for tuning into my review, and you can check out some more episodes right now.